guest today, Phil Stewart. He is a activist and an actor and a screenwriter and a man about town. If you could see, he has colors coming out of the, well, uh, from underneath his jacket. Beautiful <laughs> colors. I love them. Different and colors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stewart, you want to say hello to uh, the audience out there in the world? Hello, everyone. There you Thank go. Thank you for having me here, Lou. Oh, my pleasure. You're kidding. You're going to have some fun. <laughs> Any minute, I'm going to attack you in a nice way. You're going to love it. First thing we do is talk about um, the things that have been coming up recently. Um, no, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to go there. It, it, it's just a lot of nonsense with little kids plotting to kill their teachers. I mean, I couldn't believe it when I read it this morning, yeah. and I saw it on CNN. I mean, just disgusting. I mean, where, yeah. where are the parents of these kids, actually? But let's stay positive because we have a, um, uh, a need to portray what we do in a, in a good light only because, um, well, I think as most of us should know, we're all connected at some point. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters, and sometimes we don't realize it for different reasons. Um, obstacles that we put in our mind because somebody looks different, talks different, but we're all in the same neighborhood called Earth, and we're all basically uh, trying to do the same thing, have a good life, and help each other, hopefully. So, uh, Phil, uh, again, he is a, um, a screenwriter, a screenwriter that loves horrors. And I remember as a child, uh, that basically was my biggest, uh, well, sensation. That was my first uh, jolt of uh, being scared, the horror movies. I love Frankenstein and the mummy and uh, Dracula, and God, I couldn't get enough of Boris Karloff, and I knew them all. Peter Lauren with his smooth way of talking. I mean, it was just wonderful. So let me ask you this, uh, Phil. How, how did you get involved with uh, writing about horrors? Well, I, I guess I started as a kid like yourself. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I really loved to watch a lot of the old um, classics, like mm -hmm. the Universal movies, The Mummy, um, uh, a lot of the late shows. We used to have this guy, I grew up in Chicago, there was this, um, this horror host, he used to wear this black top hat and his shaggy black hair and he's, he had these black circled eyes and it was <laughs> Son of Spangooly. I don't know Son if anybody's heard of it. Yeah. He used to have these rubber chickens and all these <laughs> hand noises he used to throw around and show the worst movies in the world. We had Zachary. Zachary had a part in the middle. Oh yeah? Yeah, he always came in late at night and I would sneak downstairs and, uh, not downstairs, just sneak out and turn it on and everybody was asleep and I had to keep it real low and there's Zachary looking real, right, like he's looking at me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how your, your guy was, but I oh, loved it. He was, he was, he was just che cheesy as heck, but you gotta love it. But uh -huh. he, he used to show a lot of the old classics and then some really bad films, like bad like cult films from the 70s, you know. And uh, you know, it was just a lot of fun. And, and you know, I just, I grew interest out of that. And then I used to, through junior high and high school, I started making, I got my first video camera, like in 1988, and I started making little movies. Uh, you know, we did mostly in-camera uh, in camera editing, but uh, and we made some crazy movies. We had the, this one I remember about this, this crazed man um, um, who fought in the uh, Vietnam War, and he lost it, and he, these kids were having this one neighborhood game, and he would go out and he would basically kidnap the girls and put them in this, this dungeon in his basement. And <laughs> I, I know people that do that now. <laughs> But wow. we, we Did you ever have uh, scary moments with the... Uh, uh, well, actually, yeah. One of my friends was a uh, uh, film student in college, and we made a couple movies uh, based on those schlocky 70s films. You know, yeah. these were all in, in uh, satire. Uh, one of them they made was, uh, they, they used a, a little potato bug. You know, those potato bugs are about this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, they, they used that, and it, it took over... You know, they went down to Little Tokyo and took some footage, and they had the, this potato bug right in front of the camera, and, mm -hmm. and and made a schlocky film where this potato bug takes over. It was called Spudzilla. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's great. How about you, Annie? Did you have any? Uh, oh man, favorites? where do I begin? <laughs> yeah. Long Chani was mine. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah. That, All right. Okay. Oh. That's never seen it. That's a cult. That never is seen a it. cult classic. Yeah. It, it who who to... did that? Because um, that was um, I don't even he's know. still around. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, 
Oh. I know Harry Sloan bought all his library, his whole, and he was showing all those movies in Eastern Europe in the nineties. Not 90s. Russ Meyer. Or no, no, no. Like that's the big movie. titty lady. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, he was into the women. No, no. Seriously. Uh, no, this was. No, I was uh, serious. I, th I thought, it, but he went on to do other things. But but it was I, I more know it's sexually orientated. Russ Meyer was yeah, oh, definitely yeah. 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 He was into the else. sensuality of the female form, if right. I may, you know, put it nice, <laughs> If you will. Yeah. Uh, Faster, no. pussycat, kill, kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. That's right. a good yeah. one. Well, I used to have an annual party, and it was the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes party uh -huh. meets the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh -huh. So they used oh, to have really? to promise either the Hillbillies or the Killer oh, Tomatoes. Nice. Oh, <laughs> they no. had an option. Good. <laughs> Well, they did the Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, the movie, uh, you know, The Mummy, He Meets the Mummy, He Meets oh, yeah. Frankenstein, yeah, the right. little sequel. But it's fascinating how there is an audience out there for that. Oh, yeah. They it like to get be. shocked, and, and there's a, a new generation that comes up, and they find it fascinating, and, and you know, it's, it's a whole other audience that comes on board, mm -hmm. and uh, that's how you create a, I guess, a following, because to this day, Star Trek, even though it was done, the original in the 60s, um, there's, there's Trekkies out there that are now starting to become part of that whole following. And every time there is some kind of, uh, um, what is it that they put together with their signing and... and um, oh yeah, the shows. The shows, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know there's a gentleman in 2001, uh, Odyssey, that he still goes out and signs and still makes yeah. a decent living, he says. I mean, no big bucks, but... Well, and, well, Phil, what do you think is so compelling about that genre yeah. and why it's so... Timeless. Um, Why do we like to be afraid and shocked? Um, I think it's something maybe underlying with us, maybe something in our subconscious that um, even though you can go out in society every day and be scared, I mean, look at the drivers and on the roads in LA. I mean, almost. But got that's a off different the road kind of uh, scared. Yeah, I know, but I think it, I think it. it, it I want to say it, it echoes something from society. I think a lot of people who are mostly hopefully sane, don't cross that edge, I think. And I think horror movies take us to our like prime, primitive, kind of primitive. Primal. Primal, thank you. Um, primal urges that we want to do, but we don't act out. So I think that's why a lot of people like to look at horror films on screen, and but mm -hmm. not look at it. They turn away because it's, it's something that, you know, that we don't, ex we don't expect, but something we sometimes think, you know, that, I think it's also, any sense? We, we, it does, and I think that's part of it. I think it's also we want to confront our fears, and we want to show to ourselves that we can, can, can uh, be exposed to this and laugh at it and, and come away in a brave way. So it's oh, a, a safe way for us to prove to ourselves that we can uh, uh, withstand this sort of thing. Does I that wonder, make sense? I wonder oh, sometimes, yeah. yes, yes. It yeah. probably does psychologically, if you're going to ask it. Like a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we, we enjoy that. But remember, the lady that wrote, um, what was it? Uh, it was a woman, either Dracula or Frankenstein. Mary Shelley. Yeah, yeah Mary Frankenstein Shelley. Frankenstein in one yeah. night on a, a dare with yeah. other authors. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she was incredible. I mean, uh, if, if, if they took the premise and was able to... Um, put it in the movie, they did a pretty good job because I, I know Frankenstein was uh, one of my favorites from the beginning. Yes. Just the idea of cutting up parts and it was, it was all a build up. It was perfectly done. And I'm, I'm wondering, I never read the book, but I love the movie. I, it, I love everything about it. You know, one of my favorite horror movies is Invasion of the Body Snatchers and that's oh, been remade yeah. twice. Mm -hmm. And you know, when that that film originally came out, it was a, a uh, sort of a parable about uh, politics uh, and communism, because that came out in the 50s, and we were very afraid of, of being taken over by the communists. And I think that was a subtext or a theme to Invasion of the Body Snatchers, that we were all going to become communists.